again good good morning good afternoon good evening everyone and welcome to um, the session which is a demo on hyperledger transact so i'm arun um, i work as a staff software engineer at walmart global tech in india and as well i sit on a hyperledger tsc um, committee so let's see what um, so in today's session we are going to understand what what is hyperledger transact so this is one of the project which many people have questions on right so if you see hyperledger greenhouse structures you will see that hyperledger transact is listed as a library project and then many people do have questions on hey what exactly does this project do and and um, and people want to know how to use this library project in their projects or, or how to just start getting involved into hype transact right so i know there are some questions like these which which you may be keep asking like to others and there are very less answers out there so i'll try to answer try to answer some of those questions in this session as well we will see a working demo at the end and we will also try to understand what's happening um, within transact space and what's what's the what are the new things that are getting built over there and um and we'll also see how you can get involved into hyperledger transact right so this is one of the cool technology or cool way in which you can get involved or see what's happening within hyperledger space so what it, what exactly is is hyperledger transact right so um, of course hyperledger transact was 14 project to be uh, incubated within hyperledger and um, it's a library project and when we say it is a library project you might know that you might i mean things such as like having a library built and then and, and then stitching together in, it into a executable file so all those things should come to your mind right so for example when you compile a simple c program you generate a library and then that assembly code or the library code that you generate you will you will then um, link it at runtime with some other executable so you have your final program so transact is a library using which we can develop distributed ledger protocol itself let's say you we have so many protocols right within hyperledger ecosystem we have Vesu, we have fabric sawtooth indi and and iroha so if you don't feel like okay i think it is time for me to come up with my own protocol blockchain protocol so that's when you would you'd go with um, hyperledger transact as a library project so it's not just that in fact hyperledger transact if you are if you have your own protocol already and if you can adopt that to hyperledger transact it provides you unique way or, or uniform way of interfacing your smart contract engines with your rest of the system right we'll we'll see how that really connects you when we uh, see the architecture diagram so what are the key points that we need to consider it's of course written in rust so as long as you have your own protocol written in rust or a language that is compatible with rust you can straight away start using import the crate and and implement your own protocol and transact provides plug and play model where you will see from the architecture how exactly it works you can switch from let's say you start with sawtooth based transaction processor engine and then you feel like no i need for my transact i mean for my transaction i need um, chain code processor engine so if you if you write an engine that can process your chain code smart contracts and attach it to transact that's all you need so on one side you have any protocol working submitting and it has interfaces to accept transactions on the other side you can process those transactions and let's see what are the core capabilities so transact at its core provides these capabilities it provides a way in which you can schedule your transaction you can dispatch them for execution and you you also have a context manager and why context management is important let's say um, in blockchain technologies or distributed ledger technologies you may want to run your transaction once and see the result and only when everybody agrees to that transaction then move on to formalizing that as a block or putting that into a block right so so that you can finally form a blockchain so this context manager it helps you in maintaining that context information it knows that you are at this stage this is the data point that you want this is the this is your current state and similarly when we talk about state of course there needs to be a state and that needs to be backed up by a database and transact provides all that flexibility through its library plug and play model and um, 
of course there are multiple smart contract engines supported through transact right away and you can implement your own um, engine as well it you can consider this to be like a sdk for writing your own uh, transaction processor or smart contract engine module and it also provides transaction receipts where you ask i mean you send transactions to this transact it will process through the uh, engine which you have it has its own scheduler you can choose which scheduler you want once it's all done you get back the transaction receipt from it so that's that's how cool it is like that's that's the library part all this is taken care by the transact so if you look at architecture of how exactly transact is built you consider the gray parts which is on like far extreme corners of the screen to be uh, your protocol specific components right like for example on the left side you can consider that is your fabric peer node or you can consider that has your sawtooth uh, node and on the right side you have smart contracts which are again written for specific engines so you write um, engines you integrate them with transact transact has these modules of scheduler execution uh, adapters it has database backends and a way to manage state, which is both providing key value based and Merkle tree based key management, I mean, state management. So, your distributed ledger um, will be accepting transactions. It will have its own implementation of how to connect with another node in the network. It will have implementation of how to achieve consensus. And once it receives the transaction, you don't really need to write your protocol uh, for the implementation in your. In your node you can send that to transact transact will handle all that and on the other side you have the smart contract engines so if if your smart contract is written in a one of those language with these engines can understand you that's that's all you need so from uh, i mean from you you created your own protocol let's see like what components are are um, like what is it involved for you to implement a new DLT using Transact? So if you have to write your own new DLT, um, all that you would need is like make use of transaction receipts. And oftentimes, if you are implementing a blockchain protocol itself, you would be storing those transaction receipts into block. You will either form a blockchain or you will store hash of those transaction receipts and form a network, something which is like done by uh, in in Corda kind of. Um, uh, protocol right and of course you will rely on these transaction receipts to know if you have achieved consensus you will um, of course need to design your own networking layer so these are the building blocks that you can do and rest of the things you can rely on transact to do everything for you so that's how transact is helping you um, in, in in writing your own dlt software and transact can also in fact be used um, for interoperability purpose because of its multiple smart contract engines supported at, at one end so let's see a demo of how exactly transact works and like how to see it in in reality right so um, this is a demo which is from transact i hope you, can, you all can see my screen um, so in this demo you uh, we will see like it's a sample uh, transaction that it keeps sending onto this network so this uh, a transact library is used to build a sample application um, right and this sample application is written to handle transactions so what this particular command does is in this case keep sending transactions to that sample um, dlt which is built and in, let's let's see um, how it works right so for the sake of time i have already compiled the source code and what i'll be doing is just executing them in in here so what i'm trying to do is there is a, a sample dlt that is built which is returned to handle sables saber smart contract which is running WebAssembly smart contract uh, the, the smart contract engine and then i'm trying to execute by sending random transactions to that particular smart contract and we'll see how it um, executes and the output, which um, uh, which we see over here. I'm sorry for this. 
Oh, I think I spoiled my. Anyway, so I have another terminal with other example. I guess I spoiled my uh, terminal on that window. So this is another um, example which is written using Transact. So uh, it's a simple program. It it has its own scheduler service. It has um, which is using the Transact library. It has its own um, um, a way to right, um, I mean execute those transactions using again Transact smart contract engine over here. I am again using a Sawtooth compatible smart contract engine which processes Sawtooth transaction families. And what I, when I execute, I have written a loop, like infinite loop um, within this program and accepting inputs from the terminal. So this would be your, like in, in real world, you would have this node. You will you will have multiple such nodes implemented, which is making use of transact and having networking layer among them and also uh, providing a consensus ability among them so that you can rely on the transaction reset. So when in this case, when I execute a transaction, this is the, whatever I'm typing right now. Let's say I'm saying produce um, quantities of Apple, right? So this is a transaction that I'm sending to my my own DLT, which I have built using Transact. So when I send this transaction, uh, the code is it processed it. Um, so ignore the last send error part. This is coming because of um, I'm using single DLT and I'm trying to push it to uh, the, the, um, the modules, which is supposed to not, which I should not be pushing it. So otherwise you can see that when payload was received, it um, registered a callback for that and it it, it, it it scheduled that transaction, right? For execution, in this case, I'm using serial scheduler. And when it received the transaction, the transact engine actually scheduled it and executed this transaction. And it also gave the result. It, it, it execute after handling that. It wrote that onto Ledger. So when I again enter, let's say you now I'm trying to consume. I produce 10 quantities of Apple. Now I'm trying to consume five of them. You could see um, in the output that it read the value 10 from the Ledger. It tried to consume five, right? And let's say I, I'll again try to consume um at this time i'll try to consume six so this time the transaction ideally fail right and you can see that when transaction handler was executing it it failed it said uh, transaction executor it it failed to execute this particular transaction it says it read five quantities of opal in the ledger but it tried to um like fetch more than that try to consume more than that so execution failed. So this, I mean, the output which you see is is directly dumped from transaction receipt. But you get the idea from how we can build our own ledger um, using Hyperledger Transact. I hope this was helpful. Um, please ask if you have any questions. Happy to answer them. Um, so ping me for the link of this repository. I'm happy to share that. And first example, which I in fact showed, is present in um, um, like this repository, uh, transact repository. You can go to Hyperledger Transact GitHub link and get this exam. I mean, get this example code. Let me again re-execute that transaction which earlier failed because I guess I executed it from long. Uh, directory which I missed. So what you see right now is is the transaction which I was trying out earlier, um, executing by sending ten random transactions onto a ledger which was built. So you can go to examples directory and you can see. A Sable con command executor, which is making use of transact library. And when I sent um, 
um, uh, 10 sample uh, commands, it started executing them. And some of them are set and some of them are get requests on the state. You could find the output over here. Right. Um, and of course, when you implement your own DLT, um, if you would like to make use of this kind of structures, you will then go ahead and implement your own way of permissioning things, your way, own way of handling the keys and, and making sure like the right person is able to execute the transaction in addition to what smart contract already does. Um, you could implement your DLT such that it's the governance is on chain for the, the way the Sabre uh, does in this case. So that's all I had from um, this session. I see a question in the Q&A tab. Any samples available in GitHub? Yes, so the example which I just showed, that both of these are available on GitHub. Um, go to uh, www.github.com slash transact. The examples folder have the Saber con command executor, which I just showed. And you could also go to my personal repository where you find PC iPhone transact uh, example, which I showed on the other terminal a while ago. So I see another question. Any live projects using transact? Yes. Um, transact as a library is currently being used in Sawtooth. And there is another project called uh, Splinter that is making use of transact. In fact, grid, grid project, hyperledger grid makes use of transact. Um, in, in it. <clears throat>